right, so um, we're just going to have a quick look at some of our solutions that we have from Avid to allow you to um, build solutions for Dolby Atmos mixing for, for film and, and television. Um, I've purposely spent more time with Will. Uh, I want to go over this part relatively quickly. Most of it, um, as Greg said before, uh, cross between music and, and film and television as far as the... Uh, the, the equipment to use to get there. But it starts off with an important uh, slide, if we can, King. Um, one thing that we've mentioned again and again is that Pro Tools is extremely well integrated with the Dolby panning and, and rendering system. We introduced 712 uh, tracks and buses throughout Pro Tools, which is the, the main bus format that goes into the renderer. We have object panning directly from our native panner. So it just means that you can use Pro Tools more or less like you always have. You just have extra dimensions to work with. Um, Pro Tools connects directly to the renderer within the software. Uh, it doesn't require any other install or anything like that. It just has to be able to see the renderer on the same machine or on the network if you're using uh, either an HTRMU or a cinematic RMU. Um, we have routing control, what act which actually uh, Will mentioned in his in his section there, that sometimes he'll be sending the audio to a bus and uh, within a 712 bus, and other times he will turn it into an object. So we can actually change that in, in real time. One of the things that we didn't really talk about so far is some of these bigger sessions end up being across multiple computers. So being able to record and play back and decide where you record the metadata for all of this panning is really important. So that's also integrated into Pro Tools. And of course, uh, as you can see on, on some of the graphics here, the S6, S4, uh, for example, have a really good representation of, of the panning in a 3D environment. If you could uh, go over to the next slide, please. But one thing I've thought is that it can be quite scary to get into this. One of the questions that we had before is, is how do you, how do you start? Where do you, where do you begin? Now, actually, the Dolby Atmos Production Suite and Pro Tools Ultimate both have um, trials available. So providing that you have a computer that's capable of um, processing it, so a reasonably recent computer, you can actually start listening and trying these things yourself without um, having to make a, a large investment in a lot of equi equipment. And as both Matt said in the much earlier music session, and as I have here at uh, home as well, you can actually use the binaural headphone output, which has been improved a lot in the most recent release of the software, to begin your, your mixing and your um, pre-production pre and really get your head around how um, Atmos mixing with Pro Tools works. So, so don't forget that options out there for you. If you already have Pro Tools uh, Ultimate, actually the production suite is, is not particularly expensive at all. And it's a great way to start getting into that world. And because the Dolby software allows you to monitor from headphone stereo 5171 all up to larger formats, there's no reason that you, you can't begin experimenting with this with um, most likely the equipment that you have now. So I just wanted to touch on on that first so if we can uh, move over uh, to the next slide okay so it's uh, much like Greg said it's a case of combining the tools that make sense for your system um, whether that's a control surface from the free uh, Ava control application to give you some levels and some basic panning um, what's your host? Are you running native or do you need DSP power because you're using extremely large sessions? Then with your IO, are you just listening with headphones or do you need multiple output outputs to control speakers? And then it's a case of choosing the right solution for you as far as the rendering software goes. Is it the, uh, is it the rendering software, the Dolby Atmos production suite running on the same machine? Is it uh, an HTRMU, the Dolby Mastering Suite, running on a separate computer? Uh, and then if you're dealing with theatrical, obviously there's there's another um, theatrical uh, RMU as well. So you can kind of pick and choose w within these things to get you up to the level that you need to be to start experimenting, 
doing pre-production, maybe some QA, and, and then finally mixing. So there's many ways to get into it. It doesn't have to be a huge obstacle to start looking at, at this, um, this technology. So if we can um, move on to the next slide. So a really simple option with the um, fantastic uh, Matrix Studio that was released uh, just last year, we worked with Dolby and we now have the option to use the Dolby Audio Bridge, which gives you 130 channels between Pro Tools and the Dolby Atmos production suite, giving you a direct connection for all your beds and objects into the renderer. We allowed the renderer software to then use your HD native or your HDX hardware to output to an immersive environment, whether that's 714, uh, 916, or another format like that. So that gives you a really nice high quality interface with monitor control that's monitor controllable uh, by Yukon as well. So moving on to a slightly bigger system. With a similar system, if you maybe don't need the full 128 uh, tracks in some circumstances. You could actually have an external renderer. Uh, in this case, we've got a 64 channel Dante connection to a Dolby Atmos uh, renderer using uh, a Mac there. And by having uh, the renderer running on a separate computer, you just have more uh, a confidence in, in that the deliverables that you create are going to be uh, correct for what they need to be. But again, this is where things like uh, speaker processing, making sure your EQs and your delays are set correctly. Um, and in most territories around the world now, there's um, uh, Dolby staff that uh, can um, give guidelines as well as excellent information from companies uh, like Netflix about what kind of room you should be starting to work on these uh, contents. Um, so that's one option. As we grow into slightly larger situations, something like the full size matrix gives you more options again to connect uh, multiple uh, Pro Tool system, uh, in this case, a, a Pro Tool system with the full 128 channels connected uh, via Dante using a Dante 128 card. And in this case, we've got a, an example of a Dante and, and uh, or a MADI uh, HTRMU or the theatrical renderer out to um, whatever your monitoring environment is. In this case, the, um, the, the connection isn't on the same machine. Pro Tools and the rendering software is uh, working across two different machines, but fortunately Dolby has done an excellent job of having remote control software for those computers. So even though it's on a completely different computer, you can control the RMU very much like it's running on that local machine. Moving on to even bigger systems. Now, this is some of the stuff that um, Will was talking about previously. Um, although the systems are very powerful and you can do a lot in, in one system these days, there are situations where you need to split out to even larger systems where you're running multiple Pro Tools systems uh, in sync with each other to play back the various parts of your mix and then recording them and all of that metadata to another system. So it may see com seem complicated, but I think really the, the key is to see that there is kind of options really from the very, very beginning uh, and very, very simple systems all the way to highly complex systems. And I think as Will said in his session, uh, earlier on there, there was a lot of external uh, consoles, but with S6 and the controllers and the deep integration of Pro Tools with the renderer and also the Matrix and Matrix Studio for monitor control gives you a really excellent way to control what could seem like a very complicated environment but in a, a pretty uh, simple uh, and, and comprehensive integrated fashion. So that's been, you know, uh, it's taken us a while to, to get to this point in partnering with Dolby and, and other manufacturers to make sure that we provide the best solution because ultimately we would love for people to be spending their time being creative and spend their time mixing, not spending their time uh, dealing with, with technical issues. Now, one of the thing that has led to this huge, uh, uh, sorry, let me review quickly. Um, so we, we sort of um, have scalable solutions through from, from education, pre-production, all the way to the biggest film uh, mixing stages that there are. 
it's extremely integrated into the rendering solution, a direct connection. And because our software and our surfaces are all Yukon controllable or Yukonized, as we sometimes say, that makes it very easy to control everything. We have a lot of IO options that allow you to, um, to, to really choose what's right for your room. And one of the nice things is that you can import the ADM file, which is created within the, the Dolby Atmos uh, production or mastering suite, import that back into Pro Tools. So it, it gives you a very good way of um, keeping track of those master files and re-importing them for use again later. So that's what I've sort of got to say about that technology. It's really great now that as there's this explosion, the technology has matured to a point where it's made it quite accessible for a, a lot of people, um, where it was, when, when, as Will said, when he started out, it was somewhat experimental, but now we're in a place where um, things are quite well developed and the systems are quite mature to deliver these systems. Mm -hmm.